He just like to make a noise. Testing, testing. One, two, three. Oh yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Sorry. For Hello, my name is Claire Carmichael, final year adult nursing student. I'm here with Ollie. I'll get Ollie to introduce himself and what he's doing. Hi, uh, I'm Ollie. I'm one of the second year, about to go into third year, medical students at Warwick Med School. And I think we're here to talk about med school and nursing yeah. school. Amazing. So I've got all of your questions for Ollie in my little book of wonders. Um, so the first question I've got okay. is, do you get a bursary like nursing? I know they've cut the bursary now. But. Yeah, I mean, we do, but not not in the same way that a nurse or a nursing student would have done. Basically, the way ours works is it's more like if you were doing a normal degree, you'd get your maintenance loan. That's what we get from the NHS as medical students, and they do contribute to our tuition fees, um, but they make up the shortfall that's not paid for by Student Finance England, if that makes no, sense. Okay. So, so you have to pay part of it back? Yeah, yeah. so it, it's it, ours is a loan, like we do pay okay. course fees, okay. um, so I'll, I'll be a hundred grand in debt oh you know, by, the end of, <laughs> by the end of my uh, medical programme. Oh. So we do get some money, yeah. but it, it doesn't cover our everything okay. like it might have done for an yeah. student. Okay, so second question, what are the main differences in what we're taught between nursing and medics? interesting question yeah it's just not really <laughs> like I, I live with a, a nurse so what, one, okay. of my, one of my housemates yeah. is a qualified a and e nurse yeah um but is in the same year of the medical program as me feel like this may be completely wrong yeah the feeling that i get from from the nurses that i speak to in hospital and the nursing students that i see is that you guys are taught a more holistic Mm. model of, of care mm -hmm. whereas medical school particularly early on the focus seems to be on the kind of textbook anatomy physiology pharmacology yeah, yeah. um that type of thing but i assume that nurses need yeah, that we as do, well yeah. so yeah so in our course it's i know at our university at birmingham city um i'm assuming other universities structure theirs differently but we're taught the professional values at the start and mc code conduct the law and all of that what to do what not to do and then we go into the first year's basic anatomy and physiology so it's more learning the structures hmm. um the different body systems and then second and third year sort of builds on them so we'll go into more case studies and conditions yeah but we'll look at the physiology of the conditions so we're only taught so many conditions we're not taught everything um i think in doctrine you're probably doctrine medics yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I mean, um you're probably taught a lot more I, I, it's difficult because that sounds at least in theory that's oh. the same model as how we yeah. you know first year particularly for us a four-year program was basic anatomy physiology of like all all the body systems and then second year and beyond is is the cases and yeah, learning yeah. you know how to differentiate someone with cardiac pain from mm. pleuritic pain or whatever um in terms of the, yeah that the actual content mm. differences i don't know like we can get very molecular and things and yeah. genetic but you might have the same it's difficult i think you probably go into more depths and have a lot more conditions is my guess <laughs> like <laughs> I, guess. I have to assume <laughs> maybe <Yeah>. but i honestly <laughs> don't know <laughs> like for our case studies we'll have the patient a pretend patient and then they'll go into um okay so this patient's got mi so then we have to know what the condition is yeah. what the treatment is yeah. signs symptoms yeah how as a nurse you're going to treat that patient yeah. and what you're going to monitor and then how you're going to care for them, not care for them, but plan ahead so when they get discharged back in the community, right. making sure they're safe and not readmitted back into hospital. Okay, so am I, I mean, that, that's a good example. So I guess what we'd be taught is in first year we'd have done, you know, the, the relevant anatomy of, of mm. the heart and the um, the kind of electrophysiology of the heart and how to read an ECG and how ECG no no okay so that <laughs> might be like so that's a, so how it would look on an ECG yeah. um how to differentiate the different types of, of MI and mm. things like that and then 
like the pathophysiology of acute coronary syndromes and the pharmacology and the molecular action mm. of how they all you know the classes and actions of all the different drugs the statins and mm. beta blockers and ACE yeah. inhibitors and all those and where they the different receptors that they all act on and that yeah so similar yeah, yeah it does sound similar maybe it's the same <laughs> <Dracula> maybe. Yeah, <laughs> you know, did you ever think about nursing i thought this was a good one that is a really good question <laughs> um i i didn't mm -hmm. but in retrospect like not for a good reason yeah um i did the same thing that i think a lot of people do wrongly which is when you get to you know 14 or 15 or whatever and you're thinking about what you're going to do you jump to well i'm going to be a doctor mm. and i've said this before that actually at that time when i was thinking about applying for med school the first time around i had no like good idea of what yeah. the different health professions did like my mum trained as a nurse um, works in management now in the NHS, but her background is, is kind of mental health nursing, mm. and that type of thing. And yeah, in retrospect, um, there is no good reason why I shouldn't have thought about yeah, nursing as really. much as I should have thought about medicine. It's thought, well, it's like me, I, I didn't really think about being a doctor, I just went straight for nursing. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's yeah. difficult, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I mean, there's obviously the, all the differences between what the two roles do, but that's maybe another question. I don't know how you... Okay, thank you for your honest answer. Okay, number four, what specialism do you want to do? That's a great question. Um, I'm sure everybody asks you that. <laughs> asked a lot, yeah. That, that's the first thing whenever mm. someone asks what you're doing and you, and you say, it's maybe the same for nursing yeah, right, is, med yeah. school. Like, oh, what type of, of, what do you want to do when you grow up? Um, it's quite complicated actually because I publicly and again I've said this before I am aiming for neurosurgery mm. um, which is really exciting it, mm. it's a really cool specialty if you can ever get into neurosurgery yeah. theatres it's amazing there is a small caveat to that though which again I don't know how it works for nursing but specialty in medicine is really competitive mm. you know you can be up to like 20 25 plus people per one specialty training post and for some specialties particularly things like neurosurgery cardiothoracic surgery the kind of mm. you know high intensity sort of well-esteemed ones you have to begin quite early if that's what you're thinking of doing yeah. just because you you, you do med school for like five years. The first year, you probably don't know what's going on. And then the last <laughs> like year, this. you're concentrating on your finals. So those yeah. two are out. And then you have two years of foundation training as a mm. medic. And then it's immediately after that that you'd be starting specialty training for wow. neurosurgery. So basically, I'm prepping myself as if, you know, I'm like 99% sure that that's yeah. what I want to do. But if I at least behave as if that is what I'm going to do, it means I'm doing all the extra kind yeah. of things. And even if I don't do neurosurgery, I've still got the audits and the research and mm, the placements. And, yeah. You know. So you're doing extra things sort of around university to look good on the CV, yeah, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, it's so something. that when you apply, you can say, I've done this and I've done this. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's unfortunately kind of the way it is. Yeah, um, to make you sort of stand out. Yeah, that's it. it you know... I've, I'm certainly not a qualified medic yet mm. and I'm a while away from being one and I may decide in my first two years before that training mm. that I want to do something completely different but the problem is is that if you get to that point having not done any of the extra things yeah. you're going to lose out to the people yeah, who have as true. you should because yeah. that's yeah. You know. I think that's a really good idea to do as well mm -hmm. I think this is a nice question but it's very open <laughs> Right. So, what does being a doctor mean to you? Oh, that's a huge question. <laughs> I'm really sorry. No, I mean, obviously. Blame yeah. the people asking the question. Obviously, I'm not a doctor to start with. So, yeah. um, what do I think a doctor is? The problem is, is that a lot of this is going to overlap with what nurse is. <laughs> a scientist who is trained 
in order to clinically solve problems of the human body. Ooh, like and that's, that. yeah. that's how I kind of, they, they, they sort of talk about doctors as being sort of, um, you know, the scholar and the scientist. Mm. And that's kind of how I, I see it. Someone who is almost like engineering, but for the human body, yeah, like someone yeah. who is using science to work out what the problem is and then, you, you know, come up mm. with a plan or, or something using your other science knowledge to yeah. to solve a problem. But there's also the, the person-facing element. I mean, I nearly started a PhD after my first degree mm. in something like genetic engineering, okay. completely not human facing and I, I just decided ultimately that I think I need that personal connection yeah. that you get I wouldn't want to be stuck in a lab all day I think no. I need that yeah personal. yeah they say the same with nursing it's like the science and the art yeah sort of hand in hand it's yeah. nice I like that thanks what do you think doctors think about um student nurses about student nurses yeah okay I thought you were gonna say nurses in general oh nurses in general a bit of both <laughs> right okay <laughs> Okay. Sorry. No, okay, fine. As a medic, right, I'll start as a medical student and then to just yeah. so I don't get myself in trouble. As a, <laughs> as, as a medical student, and I've heard that this doesn't oh. change when you're a junior doctor, mm. and it probably doesn't change when you're working up to a consultant as well. Um, nurses are your lifeline on the wards because while the consultants expect us to I get the feeling that the consultants expect us to know what to do mm. because the medical school or someone will have told us that's never ever the case when we're let loose onto the wards we have absolutely no idea what's mm. going on and, and unlike student mm. nurses we can't be useful a lot of the time because we don't have the skills yeah. to yeah. to be so definitely nurses nursing students they all in, know kind of infinitely more what's going on than we do so you know if i have a problem student nurse is a great person Aww. to ask because they won't <laughs> judge me that's for what nice. i don't know yeah that's true um in terms of this is this is real and i kind of wish it wasn't but definitely a couple of times when i've been in theater the consultant surgeon was much much nicer to me as a mm. medical student than they were to them mm. like I got the feeling that the nursing students were kind of an annoyance to them yeah. but it shouldn't be like that and, no. and that that's a rare case yeah. like I've only seen that twice literally yeah. but that really kind of stuck with me and it was like these two have as much to learn yeah. from this as I do yeah. in fact they probably know more about what's going like yeah. I understand the anatomy in terms of attitudes, sometimes yeah. that doesn't always bear itself yeah. out. I think that's yeah. how I would put it. Yeah. And I think in um, defence of some people, there are some bad students out there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they give us other students a very bad name. <laughs> so they're a bit more cautious, maybe. Yeah, that's true for medical <laughs> students as well. <laughs> Medics or, yeah, nurses. Okay, anyway, moving on. So number seven, what's the hardest part of your degree so far? All of it. <laughs> um, the, the hard, the, I, I will say this until I think my dying breath, which is that medicine as a course, and I don't know how you feel about nursing, mm. medicine, in terms of the knowledge that you actually have to acquire, is not hard. It's like A-level biology, like mm. level. If you can do A-level biology, you can do medical school. But the problem is the pace and the the extent of mm. things that you're expected to know that's the thing that makes it hard yeah. um and it's something that a lot of people even myself who came in as a graduate who in theory knew how to study I had to completely mm. change the way that I approach learning and there's a lot more um I think actually some of the stuff that I've struggled with is the the clinical hands-on being with patients because I came from a degree that had no, it was like a life sciences degree. Yeah. Um, I had a bit of medical work experience, but nothing patient facing particularly. So in retrospect, actually, I think I would have benefited from, from taking some time to work as a healthcare assistant or something mm. like that. 
that's been quite difficult in some cases, particularly breaking bad news yeah, and oh God, yeah. things like that. Um, I've been fortunate I've actually skipped <laughs> breaking bad news so far yeah. to anybody. <laughs> I've, I've had to do it a bit. And yeah. you, you also get into circumstances where you're not expecting to have mm. to do it. But say I was talking to a stroke patient and I was the first person there when they woke up and, you know, like mm. paralysed down one side and they're saying, well, am I going to get better? Well, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Probably not. You can't really tell them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. that's the thing. You can you can be really put on the spot like that. So it, that, that stuff can be difficult. Question A is, have you ever done personal care with patients? It's, it's going to sound really like bad. I don't I'm know really what that sorry. means. I'm really sorry. Don't hate <laughs> Ollie. Yeah. What do, th this is a thing. It's a term I've heard nursing students yeah. use. I think... I think in medical school we're taught this under a different mm. guise. We're, we're taught the importance of like the biopsychosocial model mm. of care and, you know, Cicely Saunders' total model of pain and all that, yeah. that type of thing. When you say personal care, what exactly like do you the, mean? For us, personal care is more like washing, dressing, I brushing see. teeth, Sorry. Um, <laughs> hygiene, which... I can see with doctors, it's a completely different role and I wouldn't expect a doctor to come and wash a patient. So don't <laughs> kill me again for saying this. Yeah. But it's just like a completely different role. For me, I wouldn't go and get um, a doctor, unless I was desperate, mm. like because it's short on the wards. Yeah. But doctors, there's very... Sorry, I'm answering your question. No, no, I mean, go ahead. <laughs> there's very, just in my opinion, you've got so many patients, whereas we've got like one nurse to eight patients or mm. whatever. So there's a little bit more nurses to patients, I think, to do that. And we've got healthcare assistants as well to help. Yeah. And doctors, I think, are more, with your role, it's more um, diagnosing treatments. The, the, the thing I think, sense. yeah, what, what I would say to people is that if, if there's a med student, um, I can't speak for junior doctors, but if there's a med student and, and a nurse asks us to do something, it doesn't happen very often mm. because... Again, I think that, you know, they, they tend to leave us alone. But <laughs> um, but if if a nurse asks us to do something, personal care-wise, we will do it. Mm. We'll take any opportunity to kind of ingratiate yeah. ourselves with people on the yeah. ward because we're frightened of yeah. everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, and medic, it, <laughs> medic students do look scared to death. We don't know what's going on. <laughs> and we... It, yeah, I, th I think what you said, it's not, I, I don't want to give the impression that it's not that we don't want to do it. Mm. We, it's just something that we're never taught to, to do or yeah. is asked of us usually. Whether that's right or wrong, I don't know, yeah. particularly for I don't med think students. It's wrong. Yeah. Um, but they are just different. For, our, our goal when we go onto the ward is different, mm -hmm. um, you know, for better or worse. Yeah. And I think that's understandable. So next question is, someone wanted to know if they could go into medicine after nursing. Do you think it would be easier? That's a good question. Uh, I mean, as I've alluded to already, mm. given that my housemate is a nurse and she is doing exactly that. Yeah. Uh, yes, you can. Yeah. <laughs> um, there is nothing, yeah. you, you know, in medicine, particularly graduate entry medicine, kind of as it's going, particularly at places like Warwick, it doesn't matter what degree you did before. Mm. All that matters is you hold a degree to a 2-1 to standard. Yeah. They don't care what you did. If you did philosophy, if you did zoology, if you did molecular biology, yeah. kind of did whatever, it doesn't matter. Graduate entry medicine is, is always going to be open to you. Nursing is, you might correct me if I'm wrong, but it's mm. usually BSC. Mm. Yeah. Um, so... Some graduate entry medicine schools demand a science degree and then some yeah. of them go further to demand like a, a life science. I mean, obviously nursing being what it is, I think satisfies virtually any criteria yeah. that they're going to have yeah. there. In terms of it being easier, that's a really difficult mm. thing to answer because the entrance process is quite rigorous and... Just so it's kind of clear, 
they won't look upon you more favorably just because you're a nurse if that makes sense yeah. it's it's more you know you have to do well on the entry exam and do well in the interview but then obviously if it comes to an interview situation and you're being asked you know why why do you want to do this are you good with patients yeah if you've been a nurse and been through that process you're going to be good at all yeah, those things yeah so i think that's the part that would be easier and i think you would find adapting to mm. clinical placements a lot yeah. easier um and you'll know a lot of the clinical skills yeah. and things that you know how to take a manual blood yeah. pressure how to maybe do an ecg if you worked in that department how to manage a deteriorating patient mm. Nurses tend to be really good yeah. at that. What are you saying about the entry exams? Mm. Is it just maths and English or do you have like a whole separate? It's, a, it's its own oh, okay. thing. Okay, that's interesting. Because yeah. we just have maths, English and then um, the interview. Just, but that's like a test that they make you do, maths mm. and English. Mm. Does it have a name? It's maths and English. <laughs> it's just a math. All right, Numeracy and English, I think, just. Okay. Yeah. Numeracy and literacy, I think, be official. <laughs> We, we have a, a, a test called the UK, it's, it used to be called the UK CAT, it's called the UCAT oh, now, okay, yeah. which is it's what they call an aptitude test and a lot of the questions can seem very like random and obscure, mm. but it just general comprehension, there is numeracy, there's a bit of abstract reasoning and kind of situational judgment that they ask about, oh, okay. um, but it's more... A, I would say it's more a screening tool mm. and then if you do well for your particular medical school um, you get a high enough score you'll then be asked to interview and then you know obviously you go from, from yeah there. that's kind okay. of how it works thanks you did your three years undergraduate degree before and now you're doing medicine yeah so are you now self-funded and how do you manage okay. that's a question that's, that's a good question know. Graduate Entry Medicine is one of the few courses in the UK that allows you to receive two lots of funding. So I did my first degree and received the standard student finance package for that. You know, I, I got my tuition paid for. Mm. Um, I got my maintenance loan and that was enough to cover all of that. Graduate Entry Medicine, if you study on a four year program, you get that again. Although that there is some crossover, the NHS starts to fund you and student finance gives you less, but the NHS covers more. And mm. The only thing you do have to find is, I think, just over 3,000. You have to pay as like a lump sum. And that that's the only input that you have to have into your medical tuition, okay. um, which I was very lucky to have in savings from kind of working because mm. I knew this is what I wanted to yeah. do. So I saved... Um, before my first degree and through my first degree and 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 that so once you've done that in theory it works the same way if you do a five-year program as a graduate you are not entitled to that student finance oh, okay. so you would have to self-fund mm. you know 45 grand or whatever it would be oh that that's the main yeah it, exactly yeah. so <laughs> that's why when I was applying I was only applying to four-year programs yeah. How many hours of clinical practice do you do? Well, it says med meds versus nursing. In terms of who does more placement. Yeah, so how many hours do you do? It, the GMC stipulates that, you know, we have a certain amount of contact hours. I don't know what that number is. Mm. Um, in, in reality, and I think that we were talking on the way here, this is going to be one of the, the biggest differences nurses from what i understand you basically have to be there from eight till yeah. I, I don't do you all do, day, is it like <laughs> all day, every day. Do you do a... it depends on the trust like some places are eight to eight some are seven to half seven um where i'm at now at the community it's nine to five <laughs> yeah um, but i mean even even nine to five every day in practicality at least in my experience we do nothing like mm. that Say I'm on clinical placement in, in cardiology, right, for, for, for a week. Um, they might want me at the ward round every day, mm. so, you know, a couple of hours. I might go to a clinic in the afternoon and, and see patients and, and kind of be with the consultant. Um, I might 
be, I don't know, in the library studying or something. But the big difference is that usually, and it, it depends on your consultant, um, normally we don't have to be anywhere at any given time. As some of you might know, we have the 2,300 hours that we have to do over right. three years, and we have to do that before we get onto any register. Right. If we don't do it, we don't get our pin, basically. Yeah. And we have to we have a timesheet for every placement. We have to get the mentor to sign, and then we submit it to uni to show what hours. I mean, my my answer may change because this year has been our like transition year. Mm. So first year there's no clinical placement. Second year we did three lots of ten weeks. Um, after this, assuming I go through into third year, um, mm -hmm. it will be full time clinical education again. So that may be different. There may be timesheets. I may have to mm. be here and there at given times. This past year, that hasn't been my experience. Mm. And, and I've been in every day. You know, yeah. I, I think you should absolutely do yeah, that. Yeah. Get in theatres, get on the wards, be examining patients, um, go to the MDTs, you know, do the ward round, all of that, because I think that's the best way to learn. Yeah, yeah. But if I hadn't done those things... I'm pretty sure that no one would yeah. notice. Like it's a bit more relaxed, I think, isn't yeah. it? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Um, so somebody would like to know how to aim for a first <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and how hard is balancing everything? So... Wait, do you get classified? We were talking about this, school. weren't we? We were talking yeah. about this. <laughs> in med school, there's not... Um, first don't exist. Um, in, in my undergrad degree, obviously, they did. I was very lucky and did manage to come out with a first. I should very quickly say, not because I'm a good student, because I'm not. <laughs> um, the reason that I got a first was that because of the way that my degree was weighted so heavily towards the dissertation, I just did very well for the dissertation, oh, yeah. which dragged literally everything, everything else <laughs> um, up to such a degree. My average performance was like probably high 60s. Mm, um, that's good. Yeah, yeah, which I was perfectly happy with, um, but is not a first, crucially. Mm -hmm. um, so what I would say, what I did, certainly, in my second year, I did a really stupid thing, which was deciding to take all the modules that sounded really clever to be, like, oh. so when I was <laughs> applying for jobs, I thought, look, I've done all these modules mm -hmm. in, like, statistical management of this oh, and, like, God. evolutionary yeah. genetics and... Like, that's not how you get a first. Mm. What, how you get a first is by picking modules that you know you're going to do well mm. in or that are really easy to do very well yeah. in and don't demand much. Yeah. Like it, in my third year I did um, like a module in, it was like enterprise mm. innovation for scientists and an ethics module that was based the entire module was assessed on one 1,000 word essay, oh, no exam, <laughs> no compulsory lectures. That's nice. <laughs> it was, so it sounds like, I think the way you get a first is either by being really smart and mm. studying all the time, mm. which is probably the more yeah. optimal way, or you gear your situation in such a way that it makes it more likely yeah. that you'll do well. Yeah. Or some combination. That's it, yeah. Um, so... But don't be that bothered about getting a first. It, yeah. it doesn't matter for, yeah. for like anything. We were saying this. No one asks your grade at yeah, the end of the no day. No one cares. Nobody. <laughs> it's nice as a personal gain. Like I was always, first year I got really high grades. So I was like, yes, I can get a first. And then second year they were like, oh, 60, 70. Yeah. And then third year it's just gone down a little bit. So I'm like 60. So I was like, oh, I'm not going to get a first now. But it's fine. And I'm happy with that. Yeah. And it, there's no... I, I've fine. literally never, I, that's not true, I've met one thing that asked me for a first and that was applying to Birmingham Medical School. Oh. They, they, I don't know whether they say it on yeah. paper, but they do want a first. That University of Birmingham? Yeah. Oh, okay. But, but that's literally the only time it has ever become oh, relevant. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I um, didn't get in anyway. <laughs> oh yeah, how hard is balancing everything for you? Um, is it as busy and manic as medicine? <laughs> In terms of balancing medical school? Like life, um, don't, school. Don't have one. <laughs> so that makes it, it sort of goes, yeah. Your social life goes like that <laughs> in healthcare. You, um, 
I don't know. I'd probably make it harder than it needs to mm. be in that I like to do a lot of extra things. Yeah. Um, you do your vlogging and stuff. Yeah, like we're here yeah. today, um, you know, doing this. I like to be busy all the time, mm, like having research true. projects and, and things. I, I like to be active mm. and I feel very guilty or and a bit like a bit <laughs> jittery if yeah. I don't actively have something to do. Um, but the thing is, particularly with grad entry med school, is that everyone is in that situation. Yeah. I assume it's the same for nursing as well, yeah, because you're is, all yeah. you're on the same timetable. Yeah. Like you have a slightly, I would say, a slightly warped view of reality just mm. because of your placements and the things that you've seen yeah. and how you interact. Yeah, with it's people. true. So you know, get up early and mm. just. I think trying trying to have a plan for what you're going to do each day and if you catch yourself that this has been my biggest thing has been if you catch yourself in a spot where you've just kind of completely zoned out and you're not doing anything that's when you have to consciously like yeah. make an effort right I'm going to do something yeah. productive now um not that not that every second of your life needs to be productive because yeah. it absolutely yeah. doesn't like stop and smell the flowers yeah. just trying to to exercise a degree of control I think over yeah. what you're doing is a good yeah nursing's the same really intense course and sometimes it is hard to fit things in so it's just finding that balance and everybody's different like I'm like you I like to be 100 miles an hour doing mm. everything every day something and I get a bit edgy if I'm not doing yeah, anything yeah. but then other people they've got children they've got families so it's yeah. going to be hard to balance those things but yeah it's finding out what works for you Someone is thinking of nursing but loves paramedics. Can you start oh. as a nurse and then work with the ambulance? Well then, I this mean, is a question I put to Twitter. Because <laughs> it was a question I wanted to know yeah, in general. I, I, I don't know, so I'm hoping that you've So got yeah, so I put this one to Twitter and basically you can now work on the ambulance as a paramedic nurse. Is so you're on the paramedics but you're just a nurse. Well, not just a nurse. <laughs> You're on the paramedics with your a nurse. I wouldn't be taking that. <laughs> so, so, um, that's a, but, so, so you're a nurse. Yeah. It's that's not like a subdivision of a, of paramedics. That's that's a nurse. You're a nurse paramedic, <laughs> but you're oh, not a paramedic. Yeah. You're a nurse. That's very exciting. Yeah. So suppose it would be like working in the emergency department, but out on the road in your paramedic van, that's ambulance very paramedic. Van. Paramedic van ambulance. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Also, you can't, there's loads of different options, but you can't, um, there's no short course to paramedics if you're a nurse first. You can't just suddenly skip it a year or two yeah, and no, become a paramedic. Yeah, most of the health professions yeah, are like that. You have to but, train. Yeah, because I think they're all, they're all regulated by mm. their own, like, I can't remember who it is that, that is in charge of the paramedics, but they have their own yeah. regulatory yeah. body. So it's not, it's like what we were saying before about the, the interviews like simply having having already worked in a healthcare environment doesn't fast track you to any other healthcare role yeah. because you still have to meet the same standards yeah. that anyone of that role yeah. would like if i wanted to if i qualified as a doctor and then wanted to become a nurse i'd still have to start from zero and do the nursing mm. course you know it, yeah but that's, that's very cool, yeah, I had no cool, idea. Yeah. No, I didn't know until people were saying, it. oh my God, I'll try and put the tweets on there yeah. somewhere. <laughs> and, um, oh, interesting. So people can see the different, because there's different routes um, into paramedics as well. There's like different courses you can do. There is a, sh a shorter course, I think, but you still have to do, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, there's loads of different routes anyway that people will I, come into. Maybe on. if you just work in ED, because I know my housemate did. And she ended up in ambulances a lot. Oh, okay. But that was like transferring <laughs> yeah. patients. Oh. So. so, yeah. Oh. Um, it's worrying. <laughs> how are the relationships between doctors, nurses, um, consultants? Do you think that, have you ever encountered a hierarchy? Yeah. But this is basically what we were talking about earlier, yeah. wasn't it? The NHS is massively hierarchical. Mm. Like, I, I think. It's one of those things that you see like printed on posters everywhere. Like, mm -hmm. you know, everyone's on a level playing field and you, you should be able to speak up in front of your superiors and it just yeah. doesn't work like Nobody that. Does, yeah. 
in practice. Um, and that that's true, I think, across... Like, it's definitely true within tribes, as yeah. it were. Like, there'll be, yeah. you know, nurse practitioners yeah. and, and consultants and junior docs and medical yeah. students and all that. But probably across specialties, uh, across areas as well, I still... <laughs> um, yeah, it's very... It's very rank sensitive. Yeah, I mean, yeah, how right. is it for you? Is it? Is um, yeah. It's the same. I don't want to say it is, but it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I was just saying, actually, to the team I'm with at the minute, because I'm out in the community with the district nurses, it's the first time I've ever seen. Um, I don't know if you know the banding of nurses. I, I know so you've roughly, got like yeah, yeah how it, and um, two, three, yeah. four are sort of healthcare assistant, nurse and associate roles, yeah. and then five is your staff nurse. Yeah. And five, six, seven, eight, eight A and B, I think there is. Um, yeah. So on the ward, you'll have all of those. So where I am at the minute, we've got our band fives, who are amazing. Well, we've got HCAs, band threes. Um, HCA is a band four. Then we've got the band five nurse, band sixes, who sort of organise the day. And then we have band seven, who's the top of the, the chain. <laughs> um, and she sort of oversees everybody she's in charge of that whole team is that what thing. a nurse in charge is yeah i suppose that, that kind of phrase, but i don't know what it means although <laughs> on the wards it's very different so the nurse in charge can actually be a band five as well okay just basically someone that they've, they've appointed to take control of the day if anything goes wrong to deal with any patients okay. things like that someone that they've just appointed okay. basically but um what was I saying? Oh yeah, so in my team, yeah, yeah you've yeah. got this band seven nurse who's top of the ranking, I suppose. She organises everything. It's the first time I've ever seen a band seven nurse, don't mean to offend anybody out there that's watching this, I'm sure you're all amazing, but the first time I've ever seen a band seven care for a patient. Yeah. She's got her own patients. She's also... Um, she her office isn't in a separate office. She sits with the rest of the nurses. Um, she's organised it so that at handover we have handover at half past one every single day. But then that handover is also integrated with lunchtime, so everyone can sit together, mm. have lunch together. Um, and she's so lovely and down to earth. And that's the first time I've seen that because on the ward you don't see it. You don't know where the band seven is yeah. half the time. Um, the matron or the manager of the wards usually in their office. And again, don't mean to, this is just what I've seen out there. Um, and it does feel like sometimes there is a bit of a hierarchy and people don't speak up or anything like that. But where I am at the minute, it's, it's amazing. I haven't seen anything like it. And they've just introduced as well. So on Friday, they have a Feel Good Friday. <laughs> and this is what this, the band seven nurses introduced, where she's said after handover, when they're having the lunch and everything, at the end of the day, they're all going to put all of the drama on the table. They're all going to say, right, what's happened? What's gone wrong? What's annoyed them that week? And just get it all out the air clear it off the table and move on yeah have a good weekend and carry on and i think that was really, just really, really good nice. like, that's actually really good why can't everyone do that I, sorry i waffled then no it's <laughs> worth doing is it? it's, it's it's like my experience in seeing the medical team again like the mdts and mm. and the the ward rounds and things tend to be you know, like a consultant, maybe a specialty registrar, a junior doctor um, or a foundation doctor and a couple of medical students. And most of the time, despite it being in theory, very hierarchical, my experience has been that they're very good at making you feel part of the mm. team, like like you have something worthwhile to offer, which you don't, but they're good at making you think... <laughs> They're good at making you think you might, mm -hmm. which is, um, you know, obviously really nice. And it's really, um, it allows you to be more involved yeah. and participating and stuff. The flip side of that is that particularly established consultants, if they say to either a, a young doctor or a medical student, like, it's very, I say this, you do it unquestioningly. Mm. It's almost like military sometimes. Mm. It's 
and if you hesitate or don't immediately do the yeah. thing there's problems um and you've just there's there is more of a movement now to to not kowtow to to what seniors say you know unquestionably mm. but it does happen so someone wanted to know because she's just had she's second year i think really sorry if i got that wrong she's second year nurse mm. um and she's just had this massive breakup wow. and it's a lot we see this a lot on nurse and where relationships sort of break down because how intense the course is um and i think she just wanted to know one of her questions was do you think relationships can work if you're medical or nursing i mean like clearly it's, like I, I'm not the best person to ask, not having had like a long lasting relationship through medical school. Mm. Uh, like, can it work? Yeah, definitely, obviously. Mm. Like, uh, people do. Um, yeah. So, so it, it can. It is difficult. It's been, my personal experience is that it's been very difficult to have the specific conversation about because of the nature of what I'm doing, whether it's nursing or medicine or whatever, um, I need some time in which I'm focusing on, on that and I need to compartmentalise my time and I can spend some of it with, with you know, a partner and yeah. spend some of it here and, and some of it there. And, um, but, but basically you ultimately come to the point where you're saying, I need some time that doesn't have you in it. Yeah, and true. most people yeah. don't perfectly understandable <laughs> don't like to <laughs> be told like that yeah. <laughs> because why would you yeah, <laughs> so true. i think you just you just need someone who's going to understand yeah absolutely but i think yeah. if your relationship's going to break down whilst you're studying or whatever mm. whatever course you're doing not just nursing um there was obviously problems with the relationship yeah because if you were two good people meant to be for each other, this is just my own opinion, um, you would you would make it work. You would get through it, and that person would support you through it. Yeah, that that's the thing is. Uh, so a, a friend of mine that I was talking to when, when she was applying to to med school asked me this exact question. Mm. She was with long term partner at the time, and and I think in my my sagely way said that the way that you. Um, the way you avoid breaking up when one of you goes to med school is that you don't break up. <laughs> because that, yeah. as you say, yeah. just, like if you want it to work, as yeah. you say, well enough, yeah. you'll make it work. It's not, there are harder things exactly, yeah. in the world yeah. that people have to deal with than, you know, a bit of long distance or, yeah. or you know, it obviously depends on the situation. Yeah, it does, yeah. Um, but just having a, a partner who is either very understanding of what you're doing or equally needs the time away from yeah. you that you need away yeah. from them to focus on your own thing. Yeah. Then, yeah. I think so. Is that fair? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that was it. That was all my questions. I think we covered a lot of ground. <laughs> uh, you survived it. <laughs> well, um, oh, I've really enjoyed that. Thanks. There's some questions I yeah. thank you any anyone who submitted those. I wasn't expecting. There were yeah, <laughs> I had it on my Instagram, my Twitter, YouTube, everything. God. So yeah, so thank you so much, Ollie. Right. It's been a pleasure. And don't give doctors a hard time out there. Doctors are amazing. <laughs> Actually, in all genuine, honest opinion, the junior doctors, the FY twos, and the students are so good. I've never encountered anyone that's been poor or bad or they've all been so knowledgeable. Like some of them Ooh. are really knowledgeable and I think, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> How? <laughs> so yeah, so thank you. Oh, Thanks, so, well, thank you all for sending in the questions. Thank you, Claire. Thank you everyone for, for the questions. And um, maybe another time yeah. we'll do something else. <laughs> I'm sure we will. <laughs> okay. So that is it from us, everybody. And we shall see you next time. Bye.
Shutterstock Music. Shutterstock Music.